All right, before we talk about the gabinergic synapse, um, we're going to go over some of the basic components of a functional synapse I have here in my model. So here we have an axon, and it leads to uh, the presynaptic axon terminal I have over here on the left, um, my big round bubble over here. And over here on the right, I have a postsynaptic cell. And everything in between we'll call the synaptic gap. So all right in here. So the gabinergic uh, synapse and its components, um, it's strikingly res uh, similar to the uh, glutaminergic uh, synapses as well. It has um, a few extra components. Um, there's a little extra step in the process as far as uh, recycling the transmitters and whatnot. And uh, that involves uh, the participation of an astrocyte or um, what we can also call a glial cell. Um, so I'm drawing that up here at the top. Um, so our uh, gabinergic synapse is going to have uh, a few components, uh, our presynaptic axon terminal, our postsynaptic axon cell, and our astrocyte. So on with the rest of the program. So glutamine is uh, going to be required uh, as a foundational starting point uh, for uh, our neurotrans or our transmitter uh, GABA. And uh, so glutamine is essentially uh, produced um, by astrocytes, uh, or you can go down to the local GNC or vitamin shop and pick up a bottle of glutamine um, if you're uh, the athletic type. You know what I mean. Um, I'm not necessarily serious here. Um, but yes, so glutamine is uh, out here on the extracellular uh, space here up top. And in order for us to uh, be able to move it into the cytoplasm of this presynaptic axon terminal, uh, we need a transporter, a method to get it in. And uh, the transporters uh, for these synapses um, are in a group of transporters, um, and they're basically called uh, excitatory amino acid transporters. They all have different names, but there's about five of them. Um, but we'll just sort of group them together um, and call them uh, the excitatory amino acid transporters. And that'll get the glutamine um, into the cytoplasm, where it can be transport, uh, transformed into glutamate. Um, and so glutamine can be uh, transformed into glutamate uh, in a couple different ways. Uh, one of the ways is through enzyme uh, glutamase. Um, that'll just pop it right over into glutamate. Uh, glutaminase is uh, located on the mitochondria um, within the cytoplasm of these cells. Um, another way uh, we can make glutamate is through glucose. Um, so glucose can be broken down through the Krebs cycle, which occurs in the mitochondria as well. Uh, we can also call that the TCA cycle or the citric acid cycle. Um, but yes, it, 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 foundationally, uh, glucose will be broken down and ultimately produce a glutamate. At that point, uh, we need to uh, convert our glutamate into our GABA, um, which will be the final stop uh, within uh, the synapse. And that occurs through uh, glutamic acid decarboxylase. Um, so there's a couple different types of uh, glutamic acid decarboxylase uh, in the GABAergic cell, uh, GAD65 and GAD67. Um, basically, the, the only difference is where, not the only difference, but Basically, it's where these different uh, enzymes are located at and, uh, within the body. So now we have our uh, GABA. Um, we've converted our glutamate into GABA, our gamma amidobutyric acid. And uh, that's the final stop as far as um, the metabolism and breaking down because now we got the transmitter we need for um, the actual uh, component talking about this synapse. Uh, so we have our GABA and it's out here in the cytoplasm and we're going to transport our little buckets, our little vesicles, so that it can be held and uh, released into the synaptic gap uh, when we need it. And um, that GABA is actually transported into these vesicles uh, through vesicular GABA transporters um, or uh, sometimes they're referred to um, vesicular uh, inhibitory amino acid transporters. 
um, inhibitory because obviously uh, GABA is an inhibitory uh, neurotransmitter, a predominant one within the central nervous system. And uh, also talking about that um, of note, uh, GABA is uh, unable to cross the blood-brain barrier. So that, that's uh, part of the reason it's so important that GABA is actually um, made within the CNS is because if it wasn't, um, it wouldn't be where we need it the most. Um, so um, that's why uh, PO GABA doesn't work, uh, to make you sleepy. Anyway, um, so we have our GABA, it's in our vesicles, and axon potential uh, makes its way through uh, down the axon, and, and what that does is it uh, activates a number of these voltage-gated calcium uh, channels that are located on the axon terminal. And all these voltage-gated axon, uh, voltage-gated um, calcium channels uh, activate and basically move a bunch of calcium uh, from the extracellular space into the uh, cytoplasm of the cell, and that causes a fusion of our vesicles to the axon terminal, um, the wall of it. And uh, at that point in time, these vesicles uh, exocytose the contents, the GABA, into the uh, synaptic gap. And uh, I forgot to put my uh, calcium down there as well. Um, so down here, my voltage-gated calcium channel, I've got my little calcium dots here. They look significantly different than the GABA dots. I'm just kidding. Um, so go into here and come over and exocytose. And now we have our GABA and our synaptic gap. So sorry I'm slacking here, people. Anyway, so GABA can make its way to a variety of different places um, at this point in time. Um, so it can activate receptors, uh, which are located in a number of different spots in the GABAergic uh, synapse. Um, one of the places that the synapses or that the receptor be located is in the presynaptic axon terminal. Um, so we got here it's a presynaptic GABA receptor. Um, we can have it in the perisynaptic site receptor. Uh, we can have a receptor on the postsynaptic cell. And we can have receptors on the astrocytes or glial cells. And so um, they can activate, stimulate, inhibit um, a multitude of other neurons and transmitters um, within the central nervous system. GABA can also be um, pulled back into um, the presynaptic axon terminal um, through the, uh, the GAT transporter, the GABA transporter. Um, there's uh, about four different GABA transporters, the GABA-1 transporter it will actually pull into the presynaptic axon terminal. Uh, or GABA can be uh, pulled back uh, into the astrocyte, or it can ultimately be um, metabolized, broken back down into glutamine um, to be recycled through the system again. So the GAT3 transporter is uh, most commonly found in the astrocytes. So we have our GABA, it's within the astrocyte now, and uh, we need to break it down. And it can't be broken down directly into glutamate, it has to be broken down um, into glutamine in a number of steps. Um, so the first step would be through enzyme of GABA transferase. And GABA transferase will break, break the, uh, glutam um, the GABA down into glutamate. And so uh, that's where we would basically start if this was a glutaminergic cell uh, or synapse. Um, but uh, here we just had that little uh, intermediate step, um, GABA, GABA transferase to glutamate. And so now glutamate is broken down further by um, glutamate synthase into our end product of glutamine. We're running out of room here. Glutamate synthase broken down, and we have our glutamine. All right. So now we have our glutamine within our astrocyte, and we got to kick it out. And um, so that it can be pulled back into the presynaptic axon terminal and be used eventually. And so um, we have an, another transporter. It's the same transporter um, that you'll find in a glutaminergic uh, synapse. Um, and it's the system M. Uh, N as in Nancy or Nemo um, or not in the astrocyte no longer. Um, sorry, bad joke. 
Um, so our assistant and transporter uh, will pump the glutamine out where it can be into the synaptic gap and then transported back in through the excitatory amino acid transporter um, into the presynaptic axon terminal and go through the cycle all over again. And so call it a cycle, it's the uh, glutamate GABA uh, glutamine cycle. And uh, foundationally this is important um, because it's we, we need to know the steps and where the, the transmitter is going to be located in order for us to further understand exactly how the receptors work and how our medications work. And so hopefully um, this was a, a good basic foundation and it will help. Thank you for watching.